Everything that we've discussed for gas relationships up to this point has assumed that gases behave ideally. In this PowerPoint, we'll discuss specific scenarios where gases don't behave ideally. Ideal gas behavior is defined by the kinetic molecular theory. When gases behave non-ideally, there are two major postulates that can be violated. The first is that the molecules are negligibly small compared to the distances between them. And the second is that gas molecules exert no attractive or repulsive forces on each other or the container walls. Under certain conditions, these two postulates will not hold true. The first condition is that of high pressure. At high pressure, the volume a gas occupies will be larger than expected for an ideal gas because the gas particles are no longer considered negligibly small compared to the distances between them. So at high pressure, gases can be compressed, pushing the particles close together and decreasing the distances between them. At this point, those gas particles occupy volume, and that volume is significant compared to the overall volume of the gas. So when we calculate the ideal gas volume at high pressure, we assume that the gases are not contributing to that. The actual particles are not contributing to the volume. It's only defined by the spaces between them. But for a real gas at high pressure, the actual volume that we measure is always going to be greater than that predicted by the ideal gas law. The second condition is that of low temperature. At low temperature, pressure and volume are less than expected for an ideal gas because intermolecular forces of attraction develop that draw molecules together and decrease the force of collisions between particles. So at low temperature, the average kinetic energy of the particles is decreased. The particles aren't moving as much relative to each other, and they're able to actually develop intermolecular attractions between them. And these attractions draw particles together, so that the volume of a real gas at low temperature is a little smaller than what we would calculate from the ideal gas law. Those intermolecular attractions also pull back on gas particles so that they collide with the walls of the container with a little bit less force. And less force means lower pressure for a real gas compared to what we would predict from the ideal gas law. So under these conditions, the ideal gas law no longer predicts the pressure or volume of the gas well, and it can be replaced by the van der Waals equation, which is depicted here, which contains corrections for intermolecular attractions and significant volume of gas particles compared to the overall volume of the gas. So it should be noted that the form of the van der Waals equation is actually very similar to the ideal gas law. It just has a correction term added to the pressure and the volume. So there are a couple of scenarios where this correction can make a significant difference to the pressure or the volume. So the first, dealing with our correction for molecular attraction, is that the pressure has to be low. So this generally corresponds to lower temperature situations. Now, in addition to the pressure being low, the correction term can make a significant contribution if N, which stands for the moles of gas, is high. And at the same time, the volume of the gas is low. A high numerator and a low denominator will make for a larger overall correction term. The A that's represented there is a constant value that's actually specific to the individual gas that's being measured. So nitrogen will have its own A constant 
oxygen a different one, carbon dioxide a different one. So this is just a sampling of some of the different uh, constant values A that can be used for the pressure correction. The volume correction also uses a constant uh, value in it. It's uh, known as B, and these are a sampling of the different uh, constant value terms, and it's multiplied by the number of moles of gas. So the volume correction can make a significant difference to this term in two scenarios. You have a large number of moles of gas, N, and you have a small volume. So N is high, volume is low. Now in that scenario, um, that corresponds to a situation of higher pressure, which would decrease the volume, and you would still have a large number of moles in there occupying a significant component of the space. So in terms of calculations, we're actually not going to be using the Van der Waals equation. I want you to know that it exists. I want you to know what situations it would be necessary to use it in. In other words, what situations uh, the ideal gas law does not accurately predict pressure and volume. And I want you to understand the reasons why the ideal gas law doesn't under doesn't accurately predict pressure and volume in these situations. In summary, gases do not behave ideally under conditions of high pressure and low temperature. Under these conditions, the volume occupied by the gas particle can no longer be considered negligible, and intermolecular forces of attraction can develop between gas particles. The van der Waals equation corrects for pressure and volume deviations that can be expected under non-ideal conditions. <laughs>